boxes Stop it, stop it Quitting was never an option In Unit City, we build the future Well, I think that organizers, they really did an amazing job. I think we're at a crossroads. My name is Vasily Kmelnitsky. I am the founder of UFuture and I am the founder of the Unit City Innovation Park. And in this park, we are creating an ecosystem for our young, talented guys. There are many foreign representatives at the forum, many foreign partners. In Unit City, we build the future. We we're like, okay, how do we share those ideas? How do we share our vision of the future? How do we ask others to come and to share their vision of the future? And this is how we came with this idea of the You Tomorrow uh, Summit. And this is why we have more than 1,500 people who came for two days to Unit City to exchange those ideas, to learn, to get together, to network, uh, to be alive again. It's a great conference that is really important in entrepreneurship is that you need to find ways to inspire people to become an entrepreneur. You can have this fantastic idea, but you need the inspiration to say, okay, I'm going to go do something with that idea. I'm not just going to have the idea, but I'm going to do something with it. Startups need to be telling their stories to investors, to potential employees, to partners. And it's a hard thing to do because they need to convey a lot of messages and a lot of power. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking today. How do they do it effectively uh, to bring investment and to uh, be able to hire the right people? Basically, we try to promote impact innovation technology and investment and uh, to, uh, not only to get an economical return but also to make a, an impact of society and to pre uh, try to develop a better future for everybody. Well, I think that organizers, they really did an amazing job. I was really surprised by the amount of people who came to, to, the, to this event yesterday. And I met a huge amount of interesting people. Of the, all those people, they are real visionaries. And, uh, you know, they are driving the future of Ukraine and the whole world. Well, I'm here uh, as a founder of a fast-growing startup. So we've been discussing uh, a lot about pre-seed and seed stage startups, early stage ventures, how to take an idea from from zero to one, how to build a team, how to secure financing and funding to grow it, uh, and, and how to deal with everything that comes along the journey. My purpose of participating in the event today is actually to expand networking and give an understanding to the enterprises, companies and startups participating here in terms of opportunities, including opportunities for financing, fundraising, grant financing and entering international markets. I'm very glad that such an event is taking place here. First of all, I'm really happy to be here. Um, I'm a venture investor. At, a, at an American venture capital firm. And I came to Kiev because I, you, I think you have a very interesting ecosystem. Such events are very inspiring because in one place, face to face, you see people who believe, do and implement some ideas. And you understand that you are not alone. Such an event is about creating a new world that is more comfortable, safer, more understandable and more pleasant what was largely, almost exclusively, an outsourcing economy where you had individual developers working for someone else and a few product companies here and there, now we're starting to see a lot more and a lot more development and a lot more of an understanding of what it means to be an entrepreneur and a lot more of the ecosystem that's coming together, a big change in mindset that this is a good thing for the overall economy. We are all very appreciative of our time and such events allow in a concentrated form in two days to get maximum information from people who not just call themselves experts but who are real practitioners who really understand what they are talking about and who are entrepreneurs as well.
Well, the name of the today's event is You Tomorrow, and it is related to your future and to the topic of future in general. So, what is your vision of ideal future? Well, my ideal future is one where uh, people keep um, being more and more free. I think to me that means that people are they get to spend more time thinking, being able to connect with each other, uh, being able to design, to do art, and that's probably going to be enabled by technology and by uh, economic development. So hopefully we're able to do that, and I think at the same time, hopefully we're able to take care of the planet. Like that's the other big thing. If we we take care of those two things, I think we will be okay. I really believe that the future is bright uh, for humanity and for technology. I think at this stage we are identifying that we have been damaging the environment, but we are very aware of that. And there's a lot of technologies that, that are being prepared to work on that. There's a lot of things for sustainable uh, energy that are being implemented. We are all aware that there are challenges. We are all aware that going to Mars is not the only solution. But if we work on it and if people are not just completely ignorant, and I think at, the, at, at this moment people are really aware that there are challenges, I, I think that the future will be bright. I believe once we have this kind of minds which really uh, thinks and uh, thinks positive and that we can change something to the better, I think everything will be fine. There is a sustainable development program and we support it. Sustainable development is about fighting against poverty. It is about education. One of the speakers today said that if you take a coin, there has to be a freedom on one side, because where there is freedom, there is a lot of creativity, a lot of economy, a lot of development. And on the other side, there has to be responsibility, because people have to be responsible. This is very important. I'm a very optimistic uh, person. I believe in, in humankind. Um, and I hope that uh, us as a community of people are going to be able to find good solution for our planet. I mean, I think we all know that there's something called global warming and climate change. Uh, we have a global pandemic right now, so we, we see the effect of that. Um, and so I hope that technology is going to be a good thing that is going to help us uh, build a better future and not something that is um, helping us destroy the planet. So I love tech, I believe in tech, I think tech can help us. However, I see the problems like, like we all do. Um, and we all know that those problems are not new. Uh, climate change is not something that happened yesterday, it's something that happened 20 years ago and we've been talking about it for the past 20 years and what are we doing? Nothing. So it's, it's I think and I hope that uh, this pandemic is, is, is an eye-opening uh, for us to say, look guys, we have to change a few things. But I'm optimistic in the future. I, I love this planet. I don't want to have to move to Mars. I, I really don't. I'm super happy here. So I hope we're going to be able to, to, to build, to rebuild um, something that, that works for us, not only us as human beings, but us as a planet, us as an ecosystem, us as living globally together, uh, nature with human, uh, animals with humans, and become harmonious again, uh, and not just put only human at the center, but put the planet at the center and I think it's important and I hope I hope this is something we can we can do yeah I believe in that you know it seems to me that we cannot even imagine we do not know what it will be like the fact that digitalization is already here and now it is for sure there are digital characters already, there is augmented reality, there is an imitation of a, not quite yet, but a metaverse. But after all, we are human beings and it's up to us to decide which side to choose. So it seems to me that trainings, forums, live meetings, some kind of general programs, some kind of communities that focus exactly on human values, they should be. There should be many of them. Right now the world changes so rapidly and uh, we see that there are a lot of changes around in our ecology, in climate. The world became much more global than before. The borders between countries and the continents, 
they don't exist anymore. I think the world is getting smaller with technology. So, I mean, we live in such a connected world that there's very, it's borderless to some degree, right? So, you know, we communicate together, we work together, we have a global economy. You know, for me, I think it's really about communicating and working with people that have similar values and ideas. Um, and I think, you know, in the next 20 years, it's going to be interesting how technology evolves to really support humanity in a very positive way. I'd like to uh, see uh, uh, progress in the sense that um, we should be able to connect better. I think we're at a crossroads. I, I think that there are several different paths forward. You know, one path, honestly, is climate catastrophe. And the only way out of the climate catastrophe is innovation. Innovation got us into the catastrophe, and innovation will be the only way out. Um, there are a lot of ways in which technology can make everybody's life so much better through automation, robotics, artificial intelligence, but it's going to require diligence in terms of how do we develop and deploy those technologies so they become a helper, not a hindrance, you know, not, a, not a hindrance for us. There are so many problems we have from, you know, food insecurity to famine, drought, fire, uh, COVID. Um, but there is enough raw innovation capacity in the world that if we can just mobilize people and get them engaged and get the tools and all of that kind of stuff, we can solve all of these problems. It's all solvable, but we've got to work together to do it. I definitely see that uh, the potential of the artificial intelligence to solve a lot of problems in healthcare, in, uh, in uh, optimization of the utilization of, of anything. Nowadays, everything is happening and accelerating exponentially. So there are indeed a lot of changes in society, in the climate, in finance and everywhere. From my point of view, we will very quickly reach the phase where robotization, artificial intelligence, everything that we cherish, nurture and fuss over, invest in, will become mature very quickly. Today it looks like a child, and we all say, look how great he is, look how cool he is, and this child will literally become a monster in 10 years, and this monster will then begin to slowly eat those who cherished him so people will be removed from these factories. You know, I like the way Uber has done, the way everyone says, Uber, 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 wow, how cool, Uber. It provides like new jobs for the drivers. Uber will launch a kind of autopilot, driverless car in a couple of years and that's it. Because today an Uber driver is becoming quite flat and lacking initiative. Earlier, when you were a taxi driver, you had to find clients, you had to advertise yourself somehow. Today, you just sit there and are told to move from point A to point B, from point B to point C. Yes, you work those 12 hours, yes, you earn money. But tomorrow, when driverless cars come along, they'll just say, thanks, Joe, you've kind of done your job. It's fine, an autopilot will drive from now on. So that's how this child will become a monster very quickly. And it will turn, because even when we were speaking at the panel today, people were saying, we cannot give up robotization of our production, because then we will not be competitive. That is, it already became. Due to climate change and its acceleration with these fires, for instance, fires in Australia, fires in Turkey, like things are getting accelerated in that respect as well. So I, I see that a lot of funding will go into that and its prioritization will increase a lot. Uh, this is what I see for the future. Humanity has always kind of solved difficult problems and ultimately somehow coped with this matter. Therefore, I really believe in human wisdom and that ultimately that we will find the right solution and we will use all these technological solutions, some other models, in order to improve our lives, not make it worse. In this regard, I am really an optimist. I would like to think we're more environmentally friendly, uh, more in tune with nature and not against nature so much. I would, it's a nice idea, I mean, as far as how soon we get there is anyone's guess, because 
it's one thing if in one big country uh, signs on to that plan to actually reduce their carbon impact, but if another country doesn't, it makes the transition uneven and unequal. That's, uh, in my mind, one of the, the key challenges, global, if you will, in, in, in a way, more global. If anything, I wish for more people to uh, spend time closer to nature and appreciate nature much more because if we don't, then we're absolutely doomed, I'm afraid. How do you see tomorrow? What kind of society would you like to see tomorrow? And on what primary basis should the business be built on? So that it would bring benefit and development to our entire society as a whole. The ideal model of society is when everyone is engaged in what he came to this world for. If a person wants to become a banker, he should become a banker. If he wants to do something with his hands, and he is good at that, let him be this craftsman. Let him make shoes or sew clothes. And when everyone is in the right place, then there is harmony within oneself and harmony around. How do you see the future of our society, of civilization as a whole? You have to think about it in a way that doesn't lose that part called the person in it, so that technology doesn't become more important in the world than people. Technology should serve us to make our lives better. I think that this is the focus right now. On the other hand, we are going towards new technologies. And on the other hand, we are thinking about how these technologies impact our lives, how they should affect us so that we develop and things get better. I think it also helps to collaborate with people all over the world. And it makes our lives better, because we can now communicate with Ukrainians, Poles, Americans and others. So it's so easy to communicate freely. That's what technology is very good at. Uh, what values should the business be built on? How important is the person behind it? His message and his qualities. His values that he brings to the world with his own work. The number one value is to benefit as many people as possible. I can give you an example in my own business. I make something with my own hands for people who can afford it. But for those who can't afford it, I give it for free. I run a YouTube channel, you know, I've talked about it before, where every week there are 15 minutes of benefits, and many people are grateful for this. I get messages from them every day. So the benefit to society is probably the number one value, whereas profit and everything else will be a side effect. You'll get it sooner or later anyway. On the platform of Alatra TV and Creative Society Project, we have been holding big online conferences mm -hmm. uh, called Global Crisis. Uh, it already affects everyone. And we raised the topic of the real scale of climate crisis because it's not only about carbon emission, it's also about uh, climatic disasters getting stronger, which yes. is not always actually has this you know, strict relation to the uh, CO2. However, CO2 also does huge damage. But alongside with it, there is a lot of things happening with you know, in Germany, in Belgium, even the countries which seem to be quite prosperous, still they don't manage to give the decent, you know, answer to such challenges. So we wanted to ask, what do you think about it in general, about this situation? Have you noticed this climate change? What are your like thoughts around this? The fact that we're identifying climate change in all of its aspects as major problems. The startup economy is becoming the, the climate change economy as well. We're on a roll and that, that you'll see a lot of development coming out of Silicon Valley in the tech industry at large to try in some way, shape or form. It's a big, global, huge problem, but you know, the technology can play a role in helping to solve that. It doesn't have the full impact unless everybody's participating in that movement to recognize, uh, set goals and then act on those goals in terms of overall climate change. So that requires unity. How can you comment on the climate changes that are taking place today and increase of catastrophic climate disaster happening around the world? Is it a problem because some people don't believe in this? 
because we live in a bubble. We need to go to those places where really you can experience what uh, climate change actually did to some places. So for instance, we also in Lithuania, we live in a kind of bubble, everything clean. We don't, we have like drinking water and uh, everything. So, but once you go to those places where we, which really face uh, the, um, the outcome of the climate change, I, I believe that uh, it's really a problem and we should really hurry up with that, with us solving that. And uh, I'm a realistic person, so I think it's a bit too late, but I really hope that these innovative businesses now, um, now which are emerging, they will try to make our place, like our uh, world a better place uh, for people to live and for animals and all the nature. So my com comment would be like, also uh, for the people that thinking uh, to start businesses, but we should also think at the same time about these problems, you know, not only about money, but also a, a solutions, how maybe to, to reduce uh, those uh, emission and uh, like uh, find some sustainable, you know, oppor opportunities. And uh, yeah, so because you live in the same world, so you will breathe at the same air. And at the moment you live in a bubble, but maybe soon it will come to your, you know, yard, this, the same problem. So I really would like to encourage young people to, to think not only about money, because eventually money comes af come after when you really do a good thing, I think. Climate change is real, right? I mean, if, if you look at the weather conditions and the environment, um, in every place in the world, right? It's constantly fluctuating. It's a global problem, so there's no way one country could solve this problem. You know, like anything in life, uh, you know, if one, if one country is committed to it, it's probably gonna go at a slower rate, right? So I think it's a united effort. Every country in the world um, should take part in this process. Climate doesn't stop at the border. Uh, we saw that with COVID, right? Uh, it was, it, it's a global pandemic, every country is affected. No matter what you do, we've all been affected. Borders don't exist for those questions. So if as, 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 a, as human being, we cannot get together uh, and agree on all of this, uh, we're not going to be able to fix this. And how do you think it is the uh, issue of one, two organization or it is issue of all people who live on our planet. It's, it's an issue for all of us and, 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 and we are all on this together. And there's no rich and no poor. Uh, there's people who are going to die and people who are not going to die. And no matter what, if you're rich or poor, if you're in the south or in the north, uh, you're affected. So, I mean, you know, I live in California. I mean, I live in Kiev, but I'm from California and I have a house in California. I've seen the fire every year uh, destroying towns and houses and forests. Um, and, uh, and, and so we're all affected and California is one of the richest uh, region in the world. Doesn't matter, we have the fire. And, and so it, it, it really doesn't matter, we're all in this together. Of course, the cooperation is very essential and uh, you cannot fight with or fight alone. But sometimes people think that it's somewhere far away, you know, if no one does, uh, does that, so I will not do it as well. But you should start from yourself. Small things, but in total it can make a, a, a big deal. Excellent question, because I actually have experience of that. Uh, first hand experience by Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, I was actually there when it happened. And it was uh, quite an experience to say the least. But, but I couldn't help but notice over the years living in America how storms were becoming more frequent and more powerful. And I only lived in Louisiana for just under five years, but every year it seemed to be one or two more, uh, one category or two degree higher. So that's just one aspect of climate change that's having a, an immediate effect. Well, it's the media, of course, wanted to focus on the looters, but where I was, there was also a cooperation, mutual aid of people to pulling together and helping each other. A lot of that as well. Until there is a union between states and people, unfortunately it will not work. However, more and more people are talking about it these days, and I'm pretty sure that very soon we will see positive changes in this direction. Changing society starts with each individual. If we ourselves, each of us individually, change, then the whole environment will change. And certainly, because what is a state? 
These are people as well who have to think about it and change the rules, the laws, and we will all support and uphold them. Speaking about changes in the society, as we've already told, there is a project which is being implemented in 180 countries of the world. It is called Creative Society. And the main idea of this project is to create such a model of society which would have a human life as its main focus. Mm. So not a profit, you know, but human life. And what is your vision of such creative society? And what do you think about this initiative in general? Okay. Um, I think to have a strong creative society, you, you basically have to loosen the shackles that we're holding people back. I think people are naturally creative and want to be creative, want to express themselves. We're only on this earth for so long, each of us. And I think individually, each of us wants to have an impact and have a life well lived. I think that's, that's a trend line, right, of history. And more and more, like more people can spend most of their energy creating. And I think that's what we're experiencing now. It's not that it's an era of creation. I think like, like humanity is about creation. It's only that during this era, we are experiencing it at a more widespread level. It's more democratized. We just need to set values and uh, to put the person and our uh, earth and the air we breathe into the first, first place. I think we should, we should definitely value the fact that we have one life and make the most of it and try to live our best life and uh, educate uh, young people to, to follow their own dreams and not the dreams of others. Please describe in a nutshell what kind of society you would like to live in and how innovation would serve an individual. First of all, I would like to live in a safe and to a certain extent predictable society. Because all of us who live in Ukraine went through several crises during the last 10 to 15 years that have shaken our confidence in the future very hard. All we have is fear and lack of understanding of whether tomorrow will be the same as today, not better or worse, at least the same. This fact actually strongly affects my decision whether I will stay here or not. I think the technology is great because it gives everybody new opportunities, right? Um, but that opportunity also has to be distributed equally, right? So access to technology has to be pervasive. Um, it has to be universal, specifically for minorities. Um, especially women and kind of the next generation of children kind of growing into that technology. So it's really the distribution of that wealth and access. And I think, uh, you know, uh, if you look at all the countries around the world, I think technology does that to a certain degree, right? Um, you know, obviously access to computers are still difficult in different parts of the world like Africa. Um, the bigger question for me is, is uh, access and distribution. Right? Who, who gets access to that technology? Who gets to take part in the wealth and the prosperity of its distribution? Um, so I think ultimately we're becoming one class of civilization, right? And so for us to be all equal, you know, we all have to share in that technology. So. What do we people need to start with in order to live in such a creative society? Probably with a responsibility. This is the most important factor that very few people have access to, understand and comply with. And people do not know how to take responsibility for their actions. When they learn to be responsible, when they understand that their actions today determine our joint future tomorrow, then we will reach that better world. I'm 100% sure that we will be able to survive with mutual support and having a community based on one common goal. Of course, I would like society to be free, happy, tolerant, honest and creative. For me, it's just a revelation, just like for everyone else. Every person, every region is different. I would like for everyone to communicate with each other on friendly terms and have normal relationships between people. For me, this is the most important thing. For me, a creative society is a society of conscious people, a tolerant society. I'm not asking society to unite in one goal, but I just want more people to have a goal as such, because unfortunately not everyone has one and it's easy to notice. Every person will come to some conscious understanding of the processes taking place around them and will take responsibility for their actions, only for their own actions, for themselves. This is where the light at the end of the tunnel may begin to emerge. 
If we are talking about the environment, for example, we mean the pollution of the Earth. But there is also the factor of space pollution, which also has a big impact. In fact, right now, in terms of space pollution, there may be a situation where any rocket launch will fail in the near future because of the space debris that is out there. Therefore, if we do not hear each other, we will not be able to clean up either space or the Earth. So we have to be able to come to an agreement. I really appreciate respect, first of all towards myself, towards the reputation, when people are quite eco-friendly in society, when values are important to them and they follow them, and when they are willing not to conclude agreements to common detriment, but solely to everyone's advantage, as well as responsibility. Maybe there is something what each person on his place can do, you know, in order to make this creative society real. Maybe, you know, in order to make this formative society itself more humane, more based on, as you have said, humane values. What do you think? Is there is something what each person can do about it? Yeah, I'm thinking about myself for one. And I'm really interested because I, I was I'm not aware of these eight specific goals that are out there and these these measures by which one can uh, create a more creative society. And I'd be it's really interested in learning that in school. What we often do is we take the 17, uh, you know, goals yeah, from the United Nations, the SDG goals, and and take those and and offer those up to students and saying here here are aspirations that you can follow in order to potentially build early stage startups. And students often pick one, two, or three of those, and then reflect those in what it is they're doing. And so if there's, other, I love frameworks. I can't help it, I'm an engineer and I love frameworks. But if there is another framework by which we can sort of talk about the building the creative society, cool. I wanna do that, I wanna teach my students, and who knows, maybe we can make a little difference. Please tell us what would you like to wish all viewers of Alatra TV who are watching us in more than 180 countries. Wish you to have the patience in realizing your aspirations, to do what you love to do. Because I believe that when a person finds something that he really loves to do, he will definitely succeed in it. Even if something didn't work out, it doesn't mean that you will never succeed. There is a lot, a lot of examples when an entrepreneur has created the first project. Something didn't work out for him and he learned from it. He took this experience in and did the next project successfully. Watch positive news, be positive, be positively charged, act. Don't be afraid, do business. Take risks, in the end it will be worth it, make money, develop and be happy. Because by and large, that's what we all live for. My message for, for everyone is, well, enjoy life every day, have good fun, life is short, you're going to die. So just, 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 just be a nice person and yeah, have fun, take care of your family and your friends. The main thing I would like to suggest to everyone is just never stop learning. In, a, in my uh, profession and in many uh, other professions, it, it's the main key to success. You need to learn every day, you need to expand your knowledge, you, you need to be curious about new things, new technologies, all kind of stuff like that. I don't want to use an over-abused over cliché, but it is extraordinarily true that it doesn't take very many people to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. If everyone did something, you don't have to do a, a lot. If you want to do more, by all means, <laughs> go for it. But if, even if you're just comfortable doing a few things, that's fine as well. Don't let the bad news tell you that weigh you down because it's, there's always going to be bad news. Every day we have a choice. You can look at the things that you may regret, or you can look a little further ahead and look around you. Okay, what can I do at this very moment to help me gradually move a little further towards the, my goal, whatever that goal may be. So that would be my message to all your viewers. I would send a message actually to those young entrepreneurs, which are maybe thinking that we can do something or we have great ideas, but they don't like believe in themselves. So I would say that you should start doing things because um, really those great ideas sometimes become a really good solutions to many problems and and you don't need a lot you just like can really change the world